Welcome back to Bombastic Nation, a ting, a ting, a ting. Back with some more vibes for you. Yes, I and someone requested that I watch this vibe here. This one is called Geography Now Jamaica. Dung my alley. Yes, I part of the West Indies. If you all watch cricket, you all won't hear about the West Indies cricket team, a ting. Well, back in the day, used to be the best in the world, and all the rest of the world don't catch up with us and ting. But we coming back. We coming back. So. I ain't gonna keep you all too long. Thank you all for uh, suggesting these videos and stuff for me to react to. And thank you all for subscribing. If you haven't, go ahead and do so. Because I'm gonna keep doing these things. So we, I want everybody to learn about each other. So we can have some cool runnings in this place. You understand what I say? A ding a ding. But thank you all for subscribing. Who Those who already have. Thank you for comment and uh, I appreciate all the comments and stuff like that. I'm going to try to respond to every one of them, you know, but I man got a nine to five too. So, you know, I got to pick a day and go, hey, I will answer. So just bear with me on that one there. Anyway, let's get into this video. What day, you know what I mean? You know, I, I'm, I'm interested to see how they present Jamaica in this vibe here. Maybe I might find one for Grenada someday. Let's YouTube and Sim Sima. Jamaican subscriber Ashley P sent me this book of Jamaican Patois poems by Louise Bennett. Here's a poem about a time a circus came to Kingston and a lion escaped from its cage. What a magic, what a mystery. Circus lion boss him bound. And the crowd don't get it. <laughs> the crowd is safe and sound. Jamaica people grand me child. Jamaica people bold. To face the king of peace with everything under control. The lion bust the cruise door down. The lion jumped the wall. And not a soul done holler out. And not a soul done ball. The lion mingle with the crowd and prowl from west to east. The people sitting calmly and salute the king of beast. I love Patois. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> listen, 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 listen. That was kind of clear. I'll be honest with you. Listen, I have a hard time understanding Jamaicans who speak the real patois. And I'll give you an example. Uh, when I was married, my ex-wife is from Kentucky. We were living in Brooklyn, New York, right? And the landlord just live above us, and we live in the bottom. The landlord had a Jamaican tenant, and she was Jamaican. And then one day, I hear an argument going on in there. And of course, you know, my ex-wife is like, Ooh, what's going on? What's going on? And she was right next to the door that led to the other part of the apartment, the, the building. And uh, she said, what are you saying? I said, get away from the door. She just said, I go done you. <laughs> she said, what? She said, I go done you. You got to get out of there. You know what I mean? But I have a hard time understanding them. I'll be honest with you. You know what I mean? That's a totally different type of talk from than Grenada where I'm on from. We're a little bit more brutishy there and thing, but you know, let's get into the video. Let's see no babbling. Hey everybody, I'm your host Barb's Jamaica. Probably the most iconic Caribbean nation to ever hit international mainstream pop culture. So many things to talk about. Let's just jump in. Jump in, bruh. Jump in. Ah, back in the Caribbean. Don't you just love this region of the planet? First of all, Jamaica is the fourth largest island country in the Caribbean, located west of Haiti, south of Cuba, and east of the Cayman Islands, where all the billionaires hide those wonderfully offshore bank accounts to avoid taxes. Jamaica is divided into 14 parishes in the capital, Kingston, in itself acting as a parish. The parishes are further kind of split into three historic counties that don't have any administrative relevance. They are Cornwall, Middlesex, and Surrey. Yeah, with names like that, you can almost smell the British residents. Oh, yeah. The largest cities after the capital, Kingston, would be Spanish Town and Portsmore, both in the St. Catherine Parish. However, if we're talking about outside the general Kingston area, the next largest would be Montego Bay and Mandeville with the three busiest and only international airports being Kingston, Norman Manley International, Norman Montego Manley, Bay's remember Sinister him. International, and Bosco Bell's Ian Fleming International. There was some controversy over naming that last airport because everybody was like, why don't we name it after a Jamaican person? But Prime Minister Golding was like, look, the dude kind of put Jamaica on the map and if it wasn't for us, he wouldn't have had the inspiration to create James Bond, so suck it up, people. Now, despite being small, Jamaica still holds its ground on the disputed territory between them and Colombia, Nicaragua, and the U.S. over the uninhabited submerged reef sandbank areas of Bajo Nuevo and the Serenia Bank. Remember, people, the second you discover even the smallest sandbank protruding from the sea, you gotta claim it. That way, you get an exclusive economic zone. Woohoo! Speaking of which, the country Probably has about oil there. smaller islands and islets and keys and sandbanks lining their shores. The largest one being Great Goat Island in the south across Moore's Pen. Now, the one thing you need to know about Jamaica and its charm is that if you come, you will notice some of the strangest place names imaginable. Each town has a little bit of a story and context. So you'll encounter things like Broke Neck Gully, Rat Trap, Betty's Hope, Rest and Be Thankful, Old Woman Savannah, See Me No More, Time and Patience, Wait a Bit, and my personal favorite, Me No Sen, You No Come. Jamaicans just like to call it as they see it. Simple. No need to overcomplicate. Hmm. What should we call this place? 
Drop Sandwich Lagoon. Another interesting thing is that Jamaica has maroon Dude, that's wrong. that are inhabited by people descended from slaves that escaped and created their own free societies in the mountains. These villages would eventually play a strong role in Jamaica's history and in a future episode, Sierra Leone. But you'll just have to wait like 47 years for that episode. Today, they kind of hold like a slight autonomous and separate role from the rest of Jamaican culture as they live in secluded areas holding on to ancient African traditions. Otherwise, some top notable spaces of interest might include Hero Circle, glistening waters with bioluminescent and organisms that light up. Windsor's Fire Spring, you can literally light it on fire. Sunken Pirate City, Floyd's Pelican Bar made of driftwood. Dolphin Cove, the Bob Marley Museum and Mausoleum. Dunn's River Falls, Reggae Beach, Cool Runnings Water Park, Mountain River Cave with Taino and Arawak paintings, Mystic Mountain Rainforest, Bob Sledding in Ochos Rios, Martha Bray River with wooden rafts, and Irie Blue Hole in Secret Falls. Yeah, I'm still kind of mind blown over that fire water and glowing lagoon place. That's just proof that Jamaica is thriving with magical natural wonders. Which brings us to... Jamaica may be small, but it is definitely loaded with natural treasures. First of all, Jamaica lies below the Cayman Trough on the Nicaragua Rise, an area in the Caribbean Sea that is elevated, giving Jamaica shallower waters and richer biodiversity. This also gives them the seventh largest natural harbor in the world, Kingston Harbor. The country is also about 146 miles long, 235 kilometers, and at its widest, only about 52 miles, 84 kilometers wide. Basically, Jamaica is made up of nice valleys and plains in the west and center, sometimes referred to as cockpit country, with a small mocho and dry harbor mountains in the center, and finally, the tallest range, the Blue Mountains, with the tallest peak, Blue Mountain Peak, in the east, starting around Kingston. The longest river being the Black River on the west side, and Wally Wash Pond being the largest body of water inland. Now, just like we studied in the Dominica episode, Jamaica is also home to natural mineral and hot springs, such as Blue Hole, Bubbling Springs, Milk River, Rockford Mineral Spa, and the Blue Lagoon. Not this one, this one. Although much of the island has been stripped for agriculture, wildlife is also quite prevalent, especially in the undisturbed forests in the north and Blue Mountains. Animals like bats, hutia, boar, and the indigenous Jamaican boa and freshwater Jamaican slider turtle can be found. Speaking of agriculture, Jamaica was primarily used by the colonists for sugar, sugar plantations. However, today all sorts of crops are grown, but most notably the ackee fruit, which actually tastes salty, not sweet. Ackee is used in the national dish ackee and saltfish. Otherwise, other notable Jamaican dishes might include rice and peas, jerk chicken, chicken foot soup, manish water, steamed kalaloo, manish and water. And I know what half of you are thinking. Yes, let's talk ganja. See, yes. I don't know if that came from the word, the same word that we have on the island. On the island, on, on, on Grenada, I should say, when you see somebody manish, that means they don't have any manners. You know, yeah, but boy, you're too manish, yes? You know what I mean? That's sort of, that, my mom used to do that to me all the time and take, you know? If I misbehave, she said, boy, stop your manishness. <laughs> Yes, we all know it. Cannabis is pretty internationally recognized as a part of Jamaican culture. It was actually introduced from India by indentured servants from India, which is where the word ganja comes from. It's weird because for the longest time, growing marijuana and even possessing it was illegal, even though you can literally just find plants in the middle of the forests. It wasn't until 2015 that the country voted to decriminalize and amend strict laws. Today, you are allowed to have up to five plants legally, more if you have a cultivator's license. Possession up to two ounces or 56 grams is legal. And Rastafarians are allowed to use it for religious yeah. purposes. And the Rastafarians are a whole other story. Jamaica's people are few, but incredibly world-renowned and unique in so many ways. Looks like a great time to discuss that in... Jamaica lives by the motto, out of many, one people, attributing the unity to all the cultural pieces that have made them who they are today. First of all, the country has about 3 million people and is the third largest Anglophone nation in the Americas. The vast majority of Jamaicans identify as black at over 90%, about 7% are mixed, and the remainder are actually mostly made up of Asians, not whites, like the Chinese and Indian Jamaicans, with whites following after, mostly descended from British colonialists and other people groups following. And the coolest thing is they all speak in a Jamaican accent. Here's a white guy and a Chinese guy both born in Jamaica. Yeah. I um, come from Jamaica. I come from the western part of Jamaica. Can't really tell you where I come from down there though because I don't know where I come from. I'm Jamaican. Only for people don't believe me. Them don't believe I come from Jamaica because <laughs> I'm Chinese. Yeah, that was pretty cool, wasn't it? They use the Jamaican dollar as their currency. They use the type A, B, American style plug outlets and they drive on the left side of the road. That's now, like even great. though they have That's a small like population, Jamaica has probably made the biggest global impact for Caribbean culture out of all their neighbors. In the quickest way I can summarize their history, Tainos and Arawaks, Christopher Columbus comes in and 
calls it Santiago. Slaves come in from Africa. Brits come in calling it Jamaica. Slavery abolished in 1838. The Brits were like, dang, we need cheap labor since the slaves are free. Hmm. Oh yeah, let's do the same thing we did with Guyana. Come on, Indians and Chinese. Finally, Jamaica gained independence in 1962. However, they still fall under the Commonwealth as a constitutional monarchy where Queen Elizabeth still remains the technical head of state, but nobody really sees her as like the head head of state. Now, due to Jamaica's relative isolation from the rest of the Antilles, Jamaica had to kind of develop their own unique style of customs and traditions. For one, Christianity has played a huge role in Jamaica. Jamaica also has more churches per square kilometer than anywhere else in the world. Contrary to popular belief, wait, 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 wait. Listen, I live in West Virginia, which is next to Kentucky and Ohio, and there's a church on every block there. You, I mean, well, okay, like where I live here, there's a church right there. There's another church right here. And there's another church right there. And that's all in one block. Yeah. I mean, I know I'm pointing. You don't know where I'm pointing at. But it's a street to this side of where the building I live on. There's three churches right there. The 1930s only makes a small minority of somewhere around 5% of the population. If you don't know anything about Rastafarianism, basically it's an Afrocentric belief system that takes inspiration from the Christian Bible as certain rituals and doctrines like the one we discussed in the Ethiopia episode in which they believe that Haile Selassie was the Messiah, yada yada yada. If you're interested in learning it, just Google it. I wish it was that easy. I wish I could just do that for every episode. Just Google it. Jamaica. Done. Second, we all know the biggest source of global influence for Jamaica would be, no doubt, the music. Starting in the 50s, Jamaica's ska and rock steady precursors to the 60s reggae and dancehall melodies not only became super popular in themselves but also paved the way for other branch genres like hip-hop and EDM. In order to really appreciate Jamaican music though it might be wise to brush up on the part I personally find most fascinating patois. Now although in a legal sense the official language of Jamaica is standard Jamaican English or SJE many would say that technically there are two languages the other being Jamaican patois which is basically like an English Creole much like what Haiti did with French. The thing is Jamaican patois is kind of like a loose feel it as you go type of language it doesn't have an official standardized form Format, but there are certainly universally used words such as Talawa, Crosses, Pitney, Doppy, Big Up, and of course everyone knows the classics Wagwan and Airi. However, when they want to emphasize something, they like repeat a word twice, like Pasa Pasa, Liki Liki, Picky Picky, and they always use like filler words which don't have any meaning, but it kind of illustrates the story better. For example, okay, Jamaican geography Darren wrote this, and I'm gonna try to see if I could do it. So me go so bops and run a race, then me go err and run hard, and me go rups rups flick flick, and me win it easily. I don't know how I did. That was either incredible. Offensive, kind of <laughs> I don't know what Jamaican you say there, boy. Up, you will get a nickname, and it's usually based off of anything they notice from you. Yo, yep. man, what your name? Yep. Uh, no, man, you like the broom, your name broomy. You eat the cupcake, your name what? That's a, that's an island thing. That's an island thing. Uh, because back home, you, you give people the name. Like, dude walked on the street and kicked some uh, dog poop. His name is the S word. With a T-Y on the end of it. I had two friends that were near that they were nicknamed like that. You know what I mean? So it's an island thing, not just a Jamaica thing. You know, they do it back home too. Like I'm seven foot one. I had nicknames like Evo Stick, Tall Tin and Terrible, Bamboo and Pants. You know what I mean? It's an island thing. Munchie, you're raising three daughters in a house in San Francisco. Me one call you Bob Saget. Like that! Anyway, we could go on explaining more about the various festivals, traditions, dances, or how they are the only Caribbean nation with an active hockey team, even though all the players are like literally Canadian nationals, but that'll take too long. For what it's worth, some notable people of Jamaican descent might include Michael Lee Chin, Dr. Thomas P. Leckie, Oliver Samuel, Sprinters Usain Bolt, Shelly Ann Fraser Price, and Asafa Powell, Merlin Oti, Dustin Brown, Jimmy Cliff, Ziggy Marley, Shaggy, Mona Hammond, Grace Jones, Sonia Richards, Ross, Mary Seacole, Damian Marley, Sean Kingston, Portia Simpson Miller, Marcus Garvey, Naomi Campbell, Notorious B.I.G., Patrick Ewing, Louise Simone Bennett, and the most iconic Jamaican maybe of all time, the master Brother himself, Nesta. Robert Bob Nesta Marley. All right, now we got to move on and see who else likes to dance the reggae beat with Jamaica. <laughs> If you ask a Jamaican what Jamaicans are best at, they'll probably say something like knowing how to slow down and take it easy when life needs to. They're cool running. For other countries to like Jamaica. First of all, Jamaica has close ties to Cuba as they have been giving scholarships and medical help for decades. Treaties and business deals have always been active. They have a funny little rivalry with Trinidad and Tobago and Barbados though when it comes to dominating the tourism industry and sports competitions. But when they meet up as people, it's like they're brothers all over again. China keeps an eye on them considering that they already have a noticeable Chinese minority. By the way, Tessan Chin, who won the voice in the 
US was like a huge deal. And they have been investing like crazy for the past few decades. Jamaicans see this as kind of like a suspiciously nice gesture because they like the business, but they don't want to be taken over by excessive debt. Also, like mentioned in the Ethiopia episode, Jamaicans love Ethiopia, especially Rastafarians. In terms of their best friends, though, the Jamaicans I've the talked to are most likely or the motherland nations, the USA, Canada, and the UK. These areas have the largest Jamaican diaspora communities, and remittance money makes a huge part of their economy. Visa-free entry is allowed for each nation, and each country places Jamaica high on tourism publicity, which in return gives them huge global popularity. In conclusion, Jamaica is like the little island that could, and music was its fuel. People all around the world now put this tiny landmass in high regard, all because they have that certain Talawa charm, but with a laid-back life that everyone admires. Stay tuned, Japan is coming up next. Yeah, that was real cool there and thing. That was real cool there and thing. There's a really strange You know, thank you for uh, suggesting that, man, you know, because give me a little bit of home vibe feel of the day, you know what I mean? Because there are similarities, but there are differences. Like, you see, uh, Aki and Saltfish is a Jamaican thing. Our big thing on the island is called oil dung. On Grenada, I should say. I keep saying the island. They're both islands. But anyway... Uh, 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 you know, so uh, and that's what people fail to realize. Each island have its own distinct culture. So you know, somebody will come up and say, "Man, you're gonna make me some jerk chicken." No, I mean, I guess I could, but it's not my specialty. You know what I mean? We have our oil dung, our rice and peas is big there too. But you know, we have this leaf called kalaloo, but I think it's different there than it is where I, in Grenada. It's all different to take, you know what I mean? So if you're going to go to the islands and thing, don't tell people you went to the islands thinking you went to every single one of them because you went to one of them. You understand what me I say? Anyway, thanks for watching this with me and take, you know, man. This is this is always cool to watch something that uh, I'm familiar with. But it's also cool to watch something that I'm not familiar with. And that's why you don't stop watching. You click down there and watch the video that's going to be on there. Or oh, a little bubble coming up. Click on that and binge watch. You know what I'm saying? Get you some saltfish sauce and, uh, and, and ackee and sit down and grub up and ting. And, you know, what else? I, I don't know if they have sorrel there, but we have sorrel. They, I know they have ginger beer. Get you some ginger beer and ting, you know, relax. And watch up the video and ting. But anyway... Listen, man, we got to take care of each other, all right? Cool, right?